Welcome, guys. Grab the Prati here in a second. Give me a second here. I gotta find a place for my camera, a stable place. It's a lot of options here. Well, we'll turn it toward me for a second. There we go. All right. They don't really have Wi-Fi here, so I'm using my phone hotspot. So I'm, although I'm seeing this in 720 HD, it probably looks a little pixelated. Hopefully not too bad. But I'm always curious how good the uh, the hotspot is. I got two bars, so maybe it looks like 480 DPI, maybe 360. It's a lovely Sunday. Body is nice. Hearth and home. I don't think I've ever ordered this before. I could be wrong. <laughs> the tin looks familiar, as if I maybe I had years ago. Sweet, bright Virginias combined with some dark fired leaf. Oh, I didn't know that. That's where the uh, little bit of attitude is coming from. The dark fired. With unflavored black Cavendish. I do prefer unflavored black Cavendish. Not the, not the, uh, usually they say unsweetened. This says unflavored black Cavendish. Same thing. 
unflavored black cavendish for smoothness, which is exactly what the role of black cavendish should play, and a healthy amount of zesty Louisiana perique, as if there was another type of perique. Try a richer type of vapor, unlike... Ooh, that's bad English. Try a richer type of vapor, unlike any you've ever tried. No, I guess that works. The Marquis series. I gotta admit, I'd love to do a back-to-back -back comparison with, uh, what was that Dunhill Vapor? Elizabethan mixture. The reason I say that is I think this is cheaper. But it is good. Very refined. Uh, i got to give you a, a view of dish now. Hold on a second. That's uh, Pilot Mountain. Up there. thing about pipe cleaners is that when flies get in your line you can scoop them out because there's so many gnats here you can't keep them out apparently flies like wine these are ginormous wine glasses too oh god I don't know why they make fly traps. You can just set wine on your counter, and apparently gnats are attracted to red wine. The white wine, I see, uh, they're not attracted to it. Back, my network cut out at times in the, in the rain. Okay. I'm curious what the uh, video quality here is. I'm operating on my hotspot on my phone. So I'm assuming it's probably like, uh, hopefully at least 360, maybe 480. Vaprati is nice. It is smooth, it is refined, it, it's balanced. Pariki. Fly is a good protein. That's that's a good point. I cracked into my tin of uh, Sunday picnic, my eight ounce tin. Had a a bowl or two of that. It's different from what it used to be, but it is uh, it is still good. Moncloud, Moncloud, Moncloud. That name sounds like a villain in like a in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. As I, I got here about uh, forty minutes ago, and as I was pulling up, I thought about the idea of. 
wine and, and pipe pairings in terms of what goes better, white wine or red wine or something in between, like a blush or a, a rosé or something. I'm not sure what the answer is, but I'm pretty sure what the answer isn't. I don't think uh, dry white wines, dry white wines are uh, conducive to cigars or pipes. I could be wrong, but I don't think they are. My God, that's good. Getting some some development in this Fraprati bowl. Some nuanced complexity, actually. There's not a flat surface around here. Everything is curved. The chairs are curved. Tables are curved. I can't set anything down flat. But in general, since pipe tobacco is, is pretty abrasive on the tongue, in general, not English is, of course, as much, but uh, in general, I think the soothe, the soothing coating of a red wine is more conducive to pipe smoking than, than a white wine. I'm not sure, and I'm not a wine expert by any means, I'm not sure they make like a creamy white wine. In my opinion, my naive opinion, white wines are always more acidic. Yeah, there we go. Um, and Claude, I have never found a wine that I like with my pipe. The sweetness, the acidity, I don't know, just never worked for me. I agree, McLeod, and that's why, I, that's why I'm kind of experimenting here. It's not about is it good pairing or not. It is, the, the question I'm trying to solve here is within wine, what would be the best pairing? That's what I'm trying to find out. I think a, a jammy uh, red zin would probably be the best pairing. You sometimes see uh, cigar smokers doing that, like a big, bold jammy, which kind of means sweet, but not quite, uh, but thick, super thick, not watery. A super thick red would have like a tongue coating, kind of a protection layer. Almost like a, a juicy steak or a fatty food would give you that protection on your tongue. But at the same time, I could see um, I could see Paul's comment. If it's a lighter, sweet white, I agree with that as well. Anything tart, eh, that's a tough one. The only exception to that is I have found some sour beers are also good pairings, which is very counterintuitive. You wouldn't think anything sour would be a good pairing and i'm not saying it's an amazing pairing but it's it's surprisingly not that bad there are some reds that are more watery when it comes to reds i almost always go zin thicker darker oh, i saw the movie uh interview with a vampire uh, when it came out in like 1992 and although i'm sure it was fake wine it uh, it was just like so thick and I always remember that you get into the Pinot Noirs and the other reds, which I don't know much about. And I've done tastings though, but it's just, there's no mouthfeel. It's just, uh, it's, it, it, in a blind taste test, you wouldn't even know it's red. I know those have excellent qualities and they're highly touted, the Pinot Noirs of the world. But I just, I never had one where I was like, by God, this is fantastic. I'll catch up on the comments here in a second. I'm a little, I once again, although I've talked about this many times before, somehow I ordered regular pipe cleaners and I ended up with tapered yet again. This is, this is a, a lifelong challenge for me. No matter what I order, even though I triple check to make sure they're regulars, I always get tapered. And I don't know it until days later when I get them in the mail. This is from smokingpipes.com. The great thing about tapered is one side is useful. And the other side is almost useless unless you have a drilled out, bored out pipe. However, 
the one benefit of tapered is that when you're done, it is true that when you're going to go to give the final clean, you do want a little bit of thickness. And so the tapered are good for that, but that's about it. So I wish they did like a 50-50 a pack, 100 pipe cleaners, 50 tapered, 50 regular. That way you got something for all occasions. Ah, the Gavirsch demeanors of the world. I think Gavirsch demeanor is a white wine. I could be wrong. For some reason, I think uh, I have fond memories of fond memories of Gavirsch, ah, Gavirsch demeanor, but uh, obviously it's German. It is white wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve, welcome. Amir, welcome. Yeah, a Gavirsch demeanor would be would be right nice right about now. A little bit of wind. Uh, you can tell from the top of my pipe, it's a little windy here. They make those wind caps, <laughs> which I've never bought before. But uh, There's the DIY wind cap, which is just, you just cover it with your hand at all times. It's basically the same thing. I've known a few people who have bought the wind caps and put them on, but then uh, you can't tamp so you'd have to put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. <clears throat> That's an interesting blend. Who here has had this before? Who here has had the Vaparati by Hearth and Home? I'm assuming not many. It's... I'm not going to say it's obscure, but it's also not super popular. Mm, Steve B, excellent point. It is a hand warmer. <laughs> through the retro hail it has a this vaprati has a, a little bit of a like when you're a kid and you set off uh, black cat firecrackers and you can smell the sulfur uh, after they're all done burning or maybe while they're going off it has a little bit of a black cat m80 uh firecracker type of a smell or a taste interesting it's very celebratory in that way. Pleasantly surprised. Very pleasantly surprised. The Pegasus? The Pegasus that I bought... I only got a two-ounce sample. The Pegasus I bought was... Uh, uh, I only smoked it twice so far. Challenging. Challenging. I'm going to see if I have it in the bag here. No, I forget what I have packed for this trip, which is only about 30 minutes from home. Oh, 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 oh. I... I did not pack it.
little uh, little gunshot there. I see. Yeah. What is everyone smoking today? Or uh, first bowl of the day? No, 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 no. There will be no three P's talk on this channel. No three P's. Now nah, I've had many challenges with three Ps. Still don't understand what. Why well, don't why don't we make a ribbon version of it? I've had so many uh, so many challenges trying to just cut that stuff up. Just to get it in the pipe, forget about what it's like smoking it. Just to get it in the pipe, it, that that plug. I think that's the right term. That plug is so dense. You need a samurai sword just to cut it up, or a coffee grinder. Or maybe like a deli slicer <laughs> at a grocery store. That's what I should do. The next time I go to Harris Teeter or Publix or Kroger, I should uh, say, I'll take a pound of, uh, I'll take a pound of peppered pastrami. And by the way, could you cut this plug of three peas up for me? How do you want that sliced, Mr. David? Uh, sandwich slices. Three peas, sandwich slices. <laughs> Although I'd probably say cut it like prosciutto. Paper thin. I want to be able to see through it. I'm sure it violates some, uh, some health code. <laughs> I do have a ninja blender, which I make smoothies with. That might help. Apparently, it's powerful enough to chop up gravel. So I should be able to chop up three peas. <laughs> the Vitamix blender. It's great for soups, smoothies, and Peterson's. down toward the end of the bowl here. <laughs> and they need like titanium blades for Peterson's for that. Pleasantly surprised, though. Pleasantly surprised. Hearth and Home, the blends that Hearth and Home still have today are the ones that kind of stuck around. And uh, there's been a lot of Hearth and Home blends that only stuck around for a year or two. But uh, one of them, for example, is uh, had the word 10 in it or the number 10 in it. I forget what it was called. But I uh, used to love that blend. They used to have a lot of that generic uh, tin art. It was like always like dark hunter green. It, it always had a an image of a fireplace in the middle of it. Like eighty percent of their blends looked identical from the uh, the tin art standpoint. Nice to see they have a kind of up their their tin art game. All right, so here is the beauty, although I said it, now I'll do it. Here's the beauty of having tapered pipe cleaners. One side is thinner, one side is thicker. 
doesn't seem like it's going to make a difference. But for me, with my bigger pipes, if you have a regular straight pipe cleaner and you go to do the final cleaning, it doesn't have enough uh, strength. It just kind of bends. So the tapered is better for this final piece. It stays completely straight. It's got more strength to it and you get a better clean, which why does it matter for a single pipe? It doesn't. Over the course of a couple months, it does. Because it means it can delay how often you have to ream the pipe. The more you, you get out of it after every smoke, the less cake it builds up over a couple months. And that seems like a small thing, but if you smoke as often as I do, it's not a small thing. It actually is an important maintenance tip. And there's another fly in this, so we're going to have to let's come down. I'm going to have to go fishing for flies with a pipe cleaner. This is another reason I like the tapered. It's good for uh, for fly catching. You won't be able to see it in the camera because it's way at the bottom here. So you have to get him attached. Make sure it's a clean pipe cleaner. And there you go. He's right there at the tip. More of a gnat than a fly. <clears throat> 10 Russians. I never had it, but I've heard of it. I think that's in English. Sometimes you can just tell by the naming conventions that, uh, oh, that sounds dark, or that sounds like a vapor. That sounds like a Virginia. Then Russian sounds dark. Why? Because almost every beer with the word Russian in it is an imperial stout or an imperial porter. I didn't think about that till just now, but that is that is one uh, connection between the two naming conventions. Uh, Paul, I have in the past got so many backies just because the tin art is good. Blend was always disappointing. I hear you, Paul. I have a slightly different problem which is i'll never buy something for the tin art but it will prevent me from buying there are things that have a 3.4 3.5 on tobacco reviews and it, even though they're not english so i'm not a big fan of english and i know i probably should buy them but i just can't get over either the tin art or i find the name annoying if you ask me for an example i'm not sure i could think of one right now um opening night is kind of one of those but that's i i have my own issues with that for a different reason i don't know something too uh too kitschy sometimes i i can't order but i agree in general uh what is the bowl height of that pipe it's not the, the pipe I just had. Let me go grab it again. If I can find it. There's nowhere to set anything down on this place. Um, hold on a second. Uh, this one is, is actually not that high. It's what you would call a, um, oh God, you guys got to help me out here. I recognize the shape if somebody said it, but I can't think of a Rhodesian, a Rhodesian, I think. The smiles per dollar of this pipe, and it's cheap. This is probably the cheapest pipe that I keep in the bag. It was a random purchase. 
four years ago. A Maro, sorry, it's a Maro Armolini. It says it's from Italy, but I think I paid like 50 bucks for this brand new, maybe 60. I, I really don't recall. But it is a, you know, it's a, it's a mass manufactured factory pipe, but it's fantastic. It's white, easy to clench. I'll uh, do a close up here in a second. Super easy to clench. I like the, uh, you know, it's not a bent per se, but it's just a little bit of a bend. So the end of the bowl is lower than straight. And uh, I don't have any other pipes. I take that back. I take that back. I guess the brandy achieves the same level of bend, but it, it just feels different. But um, the bowl whip, I'm sorry, the, uh, the thickness of the bowl is, I won't be able to, there we go, with the, with the sun coming in here. It is one of the cooler smoking ones because the bowl thickness is so wide. Just a great cheap little pipe. Looks decent. Rusticated, not sandblasted. Big rustications. Kind of clunky if you if you look at it. It's like big chunks. Where I kind of prefer the uh, the sandblast from an aesthetic standpoint, but it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I call it I call it the workhorse of my portfolio. This is a workhorse pipe. I have those pipes that. I spent a lot of money on. I almost never smoke. Those are not workhorses, by definition. And then those that I spent very little on. That I keep in the bag all the time. There is one you hate. Was it Penzance? There was one that I hate. There was a pipe tobacco that I hate. I don't recall that. Make sure there's no flies in here. No, I don't think I hated Penzance. I've I, I don't I've only got it in samples. I don't I probably bought it once, but. Uh, Never really gave it much thought, to be honest. It's a good question, though. What what tobaccos do I hate? You know, as of today, that's a tough one. I the funny thing is, I don't buy things I hate. So I, I don't have any recent stories about. I bought something and it's like, by God, it's terrible. But that raises another question. I also kind of stay on the safe side. I, I don't, I like to revisit things that I was, I gave kind of a B minus or C plus to, but if I gave it a D or an F, I don't, I, I probably haven't repurchased it. So it's a good question though. Uh, Stevie, I have a few pipes that I rarely take out in public, but it always seems like my cheap cobs with a forever stem, excellent choice by the way, get all the positive attention. My Savinillis are jealous. <laughs> That's another question we'll have to talk about another type, is how do you manage the jealousy that exists within your pipe bag between your expensive pipes that are not getting smoked and your cheaper pipes that are getting all your attention? It's like having a... I don't have any pets, but if you had more than one dog, similar thing. How do you manage jealousy? How do you spread attention across a, a portfolio of very sensitive pipes with, let's be honest, very fragile egos. Luckily, I keep most of my more expensive pipes in a box so they can't hear or see what I'm doing with the uh, with the workhorses in my portfolio. It's it's kind of like being a father. You got you got to manage expectations of all your of all your pipe children. Same thing with tobaccos, actually. But the difference is tobaccos know they have a limited shelf life and they're going to go away. Pipes are going to stay with you for life. 
I recommend, uh, Steve, maybe maybe scheduling a, a session with a counselor and bringing your pipes with you and then have a have a chat with them <laughs> in, in the presence of a professional. It's another way to work through jealousy issues. <laughs> and on that note, guys, uh, I think I'm going to call the day. I got to hop out of here and uh, head back into town. So thanks for joining me. I'm going to end with one last uh, 360 pan here of the winery. And then we'll call the day. I'll do it slow so the uh, camera picks it up. You can hear the raucous crowd in the background. Again, that's uh, Pilot Mountain, famous mountain just about 25 miles north of uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Beautiful spot. Never been here before. First time. Much like in Virginia, in North Carolina, wineries are popping up every year. So three years ago, there was this many. And now when you look on Google Maps or Yelp, there's this many. And so usually they are, they're old farms that... Uh, they just started growing vineyards a couple years ago. All right, boys. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. Take care. Thanks for joining me.